what the, the theme was? The, the, the baptism? Um, exactly. Um, <clears throat> sacrament of baptism, baptism because we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Theophany during that month. And this month, um, the theme continues through the sacraments, um, focusing on the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Unfortunately, we won't be able to read all of the readings of this month because we start the readings of the Great Lent on the Sunday, next Sunday, which is the Sunday before the Great Lent. <clears throat> but um, uh, just like we said, the main chapter, or one of the biggest chapters that focus on baptism is John chapter 3. So for communion, it's John chapter 6. And so um, if we were to read um, all the readings of this month, three of them um, we are read from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 6. Um, and actually, they, they're read out of order. Um, and so the beginning of the chapters starts with the feeding of the multitudes. And then the Lord sends his disciples away, goes up on the mountain to pray that night. Um, and then he meets them where? In the middle of the night on the sea. Um, uh, when he walks on water and the whole um, interaction with, with Simon Peter, uh, which is found in the Gospel, actually, of, of St. Matthew, um, chapter 14. St. John doesn't speak about it again in, in, in his Gospel. Um, he sometimes leaves certain things out that were already described by the other um, evangelists because he, as you know, he wrote this gospel a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> so after he walks on water, meets his disciples, um, th there's kind of a storm. They can't get to the other side um, and until they, they welcome the Lord into the boat and then they miraculously find, find themselves on the other side of the boat. And then we, we read from the gospel of today. Why am I saying this? Because these events, uh, according to the fathers, are important to see um, why the Lord speaks, um, what he speaks to them um, the next day on the other side of, uh, of, of the sea. <clears throat> so um, so the people came the next day, right? Um, and they expected the same circumstances. They didn't actually witness what I just spoke of, except for the feeding of the multitudes. So they, they ate and were filled, and they left. And then they came back the next day for a repeat, for, for another uh, free meal. <clears throat> and um, the Lord rebukes them um, because they are not coming to the Lord at the right time, in the right way, or the right reasons. Um, and it's good that we're here to, in the church to seek the Lord, but each one of us ha has, has to ask us the same question. Am I coming to the Lord at the right time and the right way for the right reasons? <clears throat> um, and uh, St. Cyril, as well as many other fathers, say that this symbolism of the Lord coming down from the mountain and meeting the disciples in the middle of the night at a odd time um, or unexpected time um, is a symbol of the second coming of the Lord. <clears throat> um, and, as, and, and so St. Cyril relates it to the gospel um, in which uh, the evangelist says, Watch therefore, for you do not know the time um, or when the master of the house is coming in the evening at midnight, the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Um, and, and so the fathers say, well, the disciples who are, symbolizing here the church and the righteous were awake at the time trying to get to the other shore to, to, to heaven to the salvation um, <clears throat> but they can't do it without Christ um, and so um, he comes to them on top of the world because he has overcome the world uh, the, as you know the sea here is a symbol of the world um, and um, but uh, before actually they reach to the other side he gives his disciple, St. Peter, which here is a symbol of the church, um, the ability or the blessing to, to, to walk above the world, to be victorious above the world. <clears throat> okay? um, sorry, that's just a, a, a background. Um, but um, the, the main point here is that he came to them when they were not expecting in the middle of the night, but they were ready. 
and all the other people that came the next day, they, they were too late. They didn't, they didn't really notice what had transpired. And so the fathers say, well, if the second coming is symbolized by what happened that night, then the next day is, it's too late. It's, it's after the second coming. Now people are asking for salvation. Um, and so, of course, he rebukes them and he does not accept them. Um, so St. Cyril says these people symbolize the people who try to repent after the Lord comes from heaven. It's the wrong time. Now is the time of our salvation. Now is the time um, to repent. Now is time to, to wait for our bridegroom to come. <clears throat> um, and so the question we all have to ask ourselves, um, we shouldn't, am, am I ready for whenever the Lord calls me? I should not delay one moment to come to the Lord. <clears throat> he wants you now as you are. Some people say, oh, no, I need to be prepared. I need to be cleansed. I need to be beautified. Just come, and the Lord will do all these things for you. Um, <clears throat> don't prevent yourself from the blessing, and don't delay. Um, St. Cyril says these people should have believed in him without delay um, when he was calling for them to salvation. <clears throat> so I need to make sure I'm not delaying inviting the Lord in my life um, every day. <clears throat> um, so th this word, when when the, the people say, Rabbi, when did you come here? Um, St. Cyril says this is similar to um, the, the verse in the gospel where the Lord says, many will say to me in that day, and he says that's the day of judgment, Lord, Lord. So that Lord, Lord, he said it's the same thing as Rabbi here. Um, did we not cast out demons in your name? But he says, as surely I say to you, I never knew. <clears throat> so, and then St. Cyril says, you did not seek me, he says, with pure motives, nor did you have a desire to excel in holiness. These are the things by which I would have known you. He says, I don't know you. Like, we cast out demons in your name. Um, Judas probably cast out demons in the name of the Lord. But he never really knew Christ. And that's why the Lord says, I, I never knew you. Hopefully that is not said for, about us. Um, <clears throat> and, and so... I know it's a little uh, harsh message, but I think all of us need this reminder, including myself. Um, <clears throat> so are we coming to the Lord at the right time? Or are we inviting him at the right time? Um, and more importantly, as the Lord says today in the gospel, he says, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs that I am the son of God, because I just performed you for you, you know, the multiplication of, of the of the bread and, and the fish but he says but because you ate not because you saw the signs but because you ate not because of the spiritual things but because of the physical things um, imagine um, that uh, it's kind of like the Goldilocks story you you go to your house you open the door and you find um, who someone who used to be a close friend in your house um, and you find them, they've eaten your food, they've uh, swam in your pool, they are wearing your clothes, they're watching your TV, um, and they're just enjoying themselves. Um, and say, excuse me, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, oh, remember that one day you invited me? I said, yeah, you didn't come. Oh, I'm here now. <laughs> um, I said, no, I invited you to be with me, to spend time with me, and I was going to give you all of these things, but if I'm not here, no, you, you, can't, you, can't, you don't belong. Um, uh, and so he says, all of these things I was willing to give you as, as a token of my love and appreciation for you. Um, but if these are the things that you came to care for, you don't care about me, you're not welcome, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> you're not a friend of mine anymore. Probably will say that, right? <clears throat> In a sense, this is what God is trying to tell all of us, right? Um, as as St. Augustine says, you seek me because of the flesh, not because of the spirit. Hopefully this is not said about us, but we have to be on our guard to make sure this is not the case. St. Augustine says, many seek Jesus only, so he will do them some temporary good. Um, one man has a business venture. He seeks intervention of the clergy. Another is oppressed by someone more powerful. He flees to the church. Another desires intercession between himself and another. He says, then he says, Jesus is rarely sought for himself. Um, and I think that's true. Jesus is rarely sought for himself. Um, he, and then he continues, you seek me. He's speaking on behalf of the Lord. You seek me for the sake of something else. Seek me for my sake. Um, and this reminder, maybe we can um, 
put it in a form of a prayer, saying, Lord, Lord, I don't seek yours, what is yours, but I seek you. I seek you. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes we get caught up in all the, the details um, of, of the spiritual life, whether it's praying or reading or um, coming to church, uh, taking communion, all these things are important, even the service. But we could be in danger of doing all these things and forgetting the most important thing. <clears throat> um, uh, just another example, I think it's Super Bowl Sunday, right? <laughs> uh, some people like the day um, because they like to watch the commercials. Other people like it because of the ha halftime show. Other people just focus on the food that they're going to eat that day. Um, and for many people, even including myself, it's the only thing, football game they watch the entire year. Right? They don't even know who's, I don't even know who's playing, <laughs> right? Um, but the diehards, the one who really watch every game, know every player, every coach, and, and they live and breathe the game, um, they're kind of probably insulted by people like me. <laughs> um, because uh, this is their livelihood, right? Um, and outside of it, it's, life is not as important, right? Um, these are the ones who shush us when we're too loud, right? Or we're in the way of the TV. Um, these are the ones who want to discuss, you know, this, this coach is doing this, and this player has this many uh, points and all of that. That is the diehard of, of, of the day, but not just the day, football in general, right? So translate that to the church. We have to be that type of diehard when it comes to the church things, not the ones who come and, 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 and just attend and um, might be coming for some other reason or... So we have to ask, what is the number one reason why you're coming to church? Um, <clears throat> are you the diehard for communion, or is it something else? Um, <clears throat> do you know the ins and outs of, of the liturgy, or the fast days, or the commemorations, or the readings, or the different parts of the liturgy? Um, <clears throat> not to put anyone, you know, uh, to embarrass anyone, but this is what the diehard does, right? Um, do you make your com point to come as often as possible? If you have a day off, are, are you found in the church and there's a liturgy? Or you say, no, okay, my, now's my time to relax. Um, so um, some people might, if they're asked, what, uh, what is the number one reason why you come? They say, well, that's what I do. That's not a good enough answer. Or my parents force me. That's not a good answer either. Or I have to bring the kids to Sunday school. Unfortunately, sometimes when we cancel Sunday school, the attendance is very little. Church is not about Sunday school. That's, that's a supplementary thing. Even the early church, there was no Sunday school. It was all just the sermon. That was that was like the main meal um, of the education. Um, <clears throat> people would come from far and just to listen to the great fathers that we have their sermons now today. Um, <clears throat> but um, some, even sometimes we do, might maybe to socialize or to meet, meet up with people after, um, or even for the service. Service is important. But just skip literature and just come from the church. That's not really service, right? Um, so um, the number one reason should be what? For God, more specifically. For the Holy Communion, for the sacraments, for my salvation. Right? This, is, this is why I'm coming to church. Um, <clears throat> um, and again, Lord, I don't seek what is yours, but I seek you. The, the, the communion brings us closest to the Lord, as you know, as, as we could possibly be physically on this earth. So that's why we need it. That's why we love it. That's why we partake in it. Um, but sometimes it's so common and, and we're so used to this grace that we forget. Remember, it was just a couple years ago or so when the church was closed. We we're not allowed to take communion that often. And people were like... Um, doing some underhanded things just to be able to get into church to take communion. And I understood that. I'm like, I, that, that's good. But are we in that same boat now or are we going back to what we were before? Um, <clears throat> so we have to remember who we're searching for. And we don't want to hear the Lord say, you, you seek me not because of the sacrament, but because of something else. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so that's why St. Cyril says we must practice both reverence and love for Christ, then not to find anything corporal or physical, but to gain salvation from him. <clears throat> um, and like St. John Chrysostom says, after we partake of the communion, we get transformed into lions. He says, let us turn into lions 
who frighten the devils. Not the devils who frighten us, but the lions who frighten us. That's, that's the power that we will see from, from the holy mysteries. <clears throat> so we can't take advantage um, or for granted the grace, the great grace that surrounds us. <clears throat> the Israelites um, had that great grace every day when the, they found the manna miraculously on the ground. Um, and they took and ate, um, but it didn't last forever. Um, and like the Lord says um, in the same chapter of today, but later on, he says, I am the bread of life. Your father, fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, but now they're dead. Um, <clears throat> um, this, so he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. Um, that was just a symbol of me. Just don't make sure you're not take, partaking of me um, in an un, uh, unacceptable manner. Um, and so um, that is, I think, the, the main um, message for, for each one of us. Um, I'm not trying to instill fear in people um, that God's going to bring another quarantine just because of this. No, that's not what I'm saying. But we just need to have the same zeal and love, um, even though we have the opportunity to, to come any day and almost every day. Um, <clears throat> so may the God of grace give us the, the blessing of, of looking at everything in the eyes of my salvation and the grace that he offers me so that my priorities begin to shift in the proper way. And um, uh, I, I receive the grace in a worthy manner and it begins to transform me to be more like him. Glory be to me, I'm completely Blessed.